I think in general, uh, the summit was not a success. And the reason behind that is they really did not address one of the central issues uh, that the Eurozone has to face. Um, the Eurozone is basically uh, a system which is to advance and develop uh, the coordination of European economic policies in terms of monetary policy. And monetary policy is basically uh, providing liquidity to the system. And what they really didn't address and provide clarity about, which is what the markets are looking for, is the willingness of the European Central Bank uh, to absorb some of the sovereign debt out there uh, that they can uh, purchase. Uh, one of the big issues is how monetary policy works, really, is in terms of binational debt. And they've not made it clear that they have that ability. The European Central Bank is really has a has powers even larger than the Federal Reserve System has in the U.S. economy, that they have explicitly said that they can buy sovereign debt of countries like Italy, Spain, and Greece. They can also buy uh, private, uh, uh, private liabilities from banks uh, to help solve their banking crisis. And this is really what uh, the markets have been looking for and was not provided in the summit agreement. The two major outcomes from the summit, one is, uh, is the delivering of an agreement by 26 of the 27 countries that they're going to provide a little more supervision from the European Union about their fiscal policies, government spending, and tax policies. That's a long-term goal, but it's not going to be met uh, anywhere in the near term to help the world economy in terms of resolving um, some of those issues. The, uh, the lack of uh, providing clear signals to the market that the European Central Bank is going to truly fight unemployment by providing more liquidity and buying sovereign debt of the countries that are in trouble, such as Spain, Italy, and Greece. Um, is signals that they're, they're going to be taking too cautious of an attitude about resolving their problems. And what that means basically for Western Europe is the following. The whole Western Europe is not going to go into a recession, nor is it going to uh, have a robust recovery. What we're likely to see is countries with the very high interest rates, such as Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal, these countries are going to go into recession. Many of the stronger economies, notably Netherlands and Germany, uh, will t continue to grow. Uh, so we're going to see in the whole region more divergence in terms of economic policies, recessions in some countries and growth in others, and kind of flatness overall. The U.S. economy is not going to be there because we have uh, stymied any kind of further fiscal uh, spending in order to boost demand in our economy. And so we are simply growing at a very sluggish rate, and that's not going to change in the near term. And finally, and most importantly, China and India are slowing down. And we're seeing the impacts all over the world uh, of those slowdowns so that we have really a, a trajectory for the world economy, a very sluggish growth for several years going forward.